Hey everyone, we're back and we got 3.2B. We're gonna do the key here. So this is the whole the whole thing right here. All right, so the thing we should sort of keep in mind here or when we're looking at this is that we have uh, that that these are that these lines are parallel right here, so with the double arrows. And then this line is also parallel with this, which has the two triple lines as well. So basically this, you know, this, this this and this are also all four of those lines are parallel to each other so that'll make it much easier as we go all right so if i know that this is 64 here then this has to be 64 because those are corresponding angles and i'm going to just say aloud what what my rationale is now of course you could do this in a different order different way but the answers of course will remain the same uh we have a linear pair right here so we could say that is 116 that is subtracted from 180. um we know that a angle a would be 64 right because that are those are vertical angles Oh, maybe we should make that a little darker um, so we can see, but I think that's fine. Mm, yeah, let's maybe uh, uh, let's go back. So 64, I'll just put it in here. All right. And uh, and then B will, get, will be 116. Now there's a couple ways to sort of get B here, but essentially uh, alternate exterior angles there are fine. Okay, now a lot of people are tempted to sort of take these two angles up top here, 116, 64, and put them in as S and K. Remember, these aren't parallel. They don't even look parallel, so we can't sort of say corresponding angles and stuff. Yes, yeah, 64 and K are corresponding, but they're not congruent because these lines aren't parallel. So we have to sort of look elsewhere. Um, we can look down here, though, and say, well, this is, if this is 108, well, then F has to be 72. That's just linear pair. That's no big deal there. Um, well, if, if 108 is this, then G is, because these lines are parallel, these are corresponding, so that also has to be 108. And this would be linear pair, so that's 72. Or, you know what, those are alternate uh, exterior angles with H and F, so that works. Uh, these are vertical angles, so we'll go with 108 there. Um, and then, now because these are parallel, I can sort of take this grouping and, and sort of match them up up here. So these are corresponding, so that's 108, right? And then this would also be 108 because, again, they are uh, either alternate interior angle with this one or with this one or, or vertical with that. And we can do the same thing. Well, this has to be 108 up top because, again, these are corresponding or alternate exterior. And this is 72 because they're supplementary or various other things. Okay. Then we're down here uh, at T. So we have 61. So that's just going to be 119 because we, there's supplementary. They're going to be a linear pair right there. I'm not drawing in these angles to show you that they're congruent necessarily. I'm just sort of showing you which one I'm I'm marking here. Um, we go over here. We know P has to be 90 because that's up, that's just 90 right there. So let's write it in right there. If 79 is this angle, well, we know that these are vertical, so that is also 79. Uh, this is 75. Those are a linear pair, so this, so this has to be uh, 105. I'll just put an arrow. So 105, and then Q. Well, Q actually is part of this transversal here, which, or sorry, this parallel line right here, which is, deals with this transversal. And these, you know, this line right here and here are parallel. So it's like I look all the way up to angle B and think, oh, those are corresponding. So Q is actually just going to be 116 here. That's sort of the last one many people got. All right. All right, so now we're down at these right here. And I'm thinking, okay, um, I'm going to sort of highlight here my um, my parallel lines. Hmm, that's way too big. I'm going to sort of draw with a, this other pen. That's way too small. Let's see. Maybe this will be just right. Okay, we'll go here. Perfect. All right, so this is parallel. And again, you notice I'm extending them. Right, I'm extending these lines so that I can get a better idea. But those are the parallel lines. And now I have a couple transversals, right? So I know that this right here is going to be one of the transversals. And so if I just recreate that and look at the angles that are made up of my parallel lines and my transversals, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's those two are parallel. We have a line going across here. We have X that's part of this, and I have 60. Oh, those are alternate interior angles, so they're going to be the same. So X is going to be 60. So I can just sort of keep track of it over here. I'll draw it on the diagram, but I'll also just keep track on the side. And then we have another transversal going on here. We have this one right here. Okay, going along. So I'm thinking, okay, still these sort of, sort of same parallel lines, but the transversal is kind of going like that. And then I'm thinking, oh, well, Y is actually part of that transversal, and that's one of those parallel lines. And 61 is the other. Oh, yeah, those right there are corresponding angles, so they're going to be congruent. So Y is 61. Sound great. All right, we'll do the same thing here. We're going to extend our parallel lines. Okay, I'm going to be a little careful so it doesn't look super horrible here. Oh, too bad. 
spoke too soon. All right, we got a couple transversals. We got this one right here, which I'll just sort of draw and extend. And hopefully we recognize that again, here's some parallel lines. The angles that I have that are part of this are here and here. Well, those are same side interior angles. So because they're same side interior angles, we know they have to be supplementary. So literally we're just gonna write that. If supplementary means add to 180, so four X and 14 X, so four X plus 14 X has to be 180. So we get 18 X equals 180. So X is 10. And I'll just circle that right there. All right, then we got this other part, other transversal, which I'll try not to draw too much on, but this one right here. So we know that 2y and this 90 are going to be sort of add up to, they're going to be supplementary as well because they're also same side interior angles. It's sort of like we have this uh, and this and this. What well, we have basically we're doing with this angle and this angle right here, those are same side interior. So they're going to be supplementary. So 2y plus 90 equals 180. And now, of course, you can think of this is 90, then these are all sort of 90. Right, so that's 90, that's 90, and that's 90. So we can say alternate interior angles are congruent, so 2y equals 90. And that makes sense because if 2, you know, 2y plus 90 equals 180, then of course 2y has, has to equal 90 anyway. So y is just 45. And again, this is just, again, we want to make sure we got the difference between the angle measure, right? This angle measure is 90, but y is 45. All right, so we got a couple of things, sets of parallel lines here. So let's sort of take these first here. So we'll go along uh, this, and then we have this. So we're just looking at sort of the first transversal here, the one sort of going across the top. And we think, okay, let's just mark what we know. So we're thinking, okay, we have 120, so that has to be 60. And then we're thinking, oh, I, I can spot that. That's actually, those are corresponding. So X is just gonna also be 60. So I'll just write X equals 60 over here. And then we're thinking, oh, well, we have more parallel lines. So this blue line right here, I'll make it this one. I'll just extend this one. And now the transversal that goes between them is, part, is actually this red one. But we're thinking, oh, these are also corresponding. It's kind of like, you know, we have these right here and right here. So, the, yeah, those are corresponding. Just like up, this, up top, we sort of had um, the, you know, it would be like these right here and right here. So we, they're still corresponding. So we know that this angle is 60 here as well. So my equation is just going to be, well, 3y plus 6 equals 60. So 3y oops, uh, equals 54. Uh, so y equals 9. So we have that and we have that. All right, moving on. So now we're down here. We can look at, we only have one set of parallel lines here. So I'll just sort of sketch that out carefully, careful, careful. All right, we'll go ahead and extend What's happening? Extend these lines here. I know the trees not me. Oh no, can't work like this under these conditions. All right, it's freezing, but hopefully we get better right here. All right, so we have a couple transversals, one of which would be sort of this one right here. I think it's better. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, if I have, again, I'll just sketch this out. I'm thinking we have these two lines. This is my transversal. 70 is made up of, of these two, of the transversal in this angle. And Y isn't 50, is it? But X is, right? So now we can sort of say, oh, well, those are corresponding angles. So X has to be 70. Okay. And then we should hopefully see that these are vertical angles. So this is going to be 50 and I could just mark that. So either one I could use. And so we'll come back to that. Um, now we have another tra transversal happening here. We're thinking, okay, we'll extend this right here. And so now we know that... Um, that actually, you know what, we don't even have to do anything with, with this transversal, which is kind of nice because if you look right here, we know that 70, 50, and Y add up to this uh, straight line right here. They're not supplementary because supplementary means there's two, right? There's two that add up to 180, but these three add up to 180. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, well, 70 plus 50 plus Y equals 180. And so we get Y uh, equals, uh, that's 120, subtract, so we get Y equals 60. All right, next one, we got five more. All right, so the next one is, these are my parallel lines. And again, it seems to be freezing just on this cool, cool line here. I don't know. All right, maybe we'll use a different one if this is affecting it so much. I don't know if these are gonna be any better. Nope. Okay, so let's just use a normal pen for now. So let's, we'll just mark them in blue. Okay, sorry to, to break the pattern. All right, so those are our parallel lines. We only have one, so we got a couple of things. Let's check out this 
nothing on the chop transversal really. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at that one because there's no angles on it. So if I look here though, we hopefully spot that if I have it like this and coming across here, three X is part of that and 42 is part of that. And those are alternate interior angles. So I know three X and 42 are the same. So three X equals, so I'll just even write 42 degrees here because I know that, but three X and 42 are the same. So we get X equals 14 here. So not so bad. So if this is 42, right? If this is 42 and this is 42, well, we know that this whole angle right here has to be 90. And again, because this is 90 and these are same side interior angles, they got to be supplementary. So they have to be. So if this is 42, I can subtract from, from 90 to get 48 over on this side, right? Because 42 and 40, because they basically are, are complementary. They're going to add to 90 here. So that's 48. So we know that we can write, that didn't look like a 14, but we have 6y minus 6 equals 48. So we get 6y equals uh, 54. So y equals not, uh, now it's supposed to be nine degrees, but instead I just didn't do it right. And I apologize profusely. Okay. So nine, it wasn't even degrees. It just was bad. Okay. And this isn't even 14 degrees. This is just x equals 14. Why would you let me do that? Okay. So we got y equals nine. So we got both of them there. All right. Number 12. Um, I'm going to do less tracing here because there's not a lot of room, but the, the idea is that, okay, if I'm looking at the, you know, this parallel line right here, I guess I'm going to, right. And uh, this would be sort of a transversal that goes between them right here. I'll just mark what I know. So if this is X, well, this is going to be X as well because those are alternate interior angles. Um, this is another sort of transversal that's going through here. So I'm thinking, okay, if this is 50, well, then this has to be 50. So even if I don't exactly know what X was or whatever, or if it's ever made, don't even know if it's helping, I got this angle, I just put it anyway. Um, and then we're thinking, okay, well, if these, this line right here is actually parallel with this line, and then this is a transversal. So 55, oops, I used one there. So this 55 actually is gonna be X, and which is gonna be this X. So we can say, well, that's 55, and so that's 55. So X is 55. And so to define why, well, hopefully we realize that these, if these are parallel as well, this is a transversal top. And so this right here, right, is going to be this angle here because they're complementary. So again, it's sort of like we have this, this, so our Y is here and our angles right there, they're complementary. So we know that, you know, this is Y. So we can say, well, 50 plus 55 plus Y equals 180. And then when we solve, we get y equals uh, 75, I believe. Okay. Three more. Okay. This one's a little different, tricky. All right. So we're going to say these are the parallel lines right here and right here. So let's take a look at our transversal. Um, nothing we can do with this top one because we don't have, we have y, but we don't have anything else over here. So let's take this sort of slanted one as a transversal. And think, okay, well, this and this, nope, aren't part of those, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but what I would say is that this right here, this X right here, and this 56 are going to be alternate interior angles. And again, just to double check, if I'm looking here, we say, oh, there they are, alternate interior angles. So that's 56 and X. So this has to be 56. Okay. And then I'm thinking, okay, this is where it gets a little tricky because what I know about well, these are parallel as well, All right? So I'll draw those in green. And so if I sort of looking at this blue transversal right here, oh, I made it green again, those, that, that green transversal, right? This whole angle right here is gonna be 56 and 24 together. So this whole angle in here is gonna be 80 degrees. And so if I break this down and think, okay, well, this is 80, right? And I wanna find why, oh, well, so those are same side interior angles. They're gonna to add to 180. So if this is 80, this just has to be 100. Right, so because 100 and this whole thing of 80 have to be supplementary, and it kind of works the same way as this other one in that uh, I'm sort of I'm looking at these two uh, angles right here, this full angle of 80, and this one right here because these lines are parallel. Well, 80 plus 100 as well, so this angle is 100. Now, in this case, that doesn't solve uh, for uh, z in this case. I'm just writing these down, um, but we can pretty easily. We say four Z and hundred are the same thing. So four Z equals hundred. So Z equals 25. So Z equals 25 degrees. All right, uh, next one. 
we have two sets of parallel lines again. Uh, the main thing I look at here is, well, I, I could hopefully recognize that this and this are congruent. Now that doesn't help me in this case because Z plus 32 and five Y, so that's not helping. But what I can do is hopefully recognize that, okay, well, if this is 100 because these are parallel, that this has to be 70, right? And that has to be 70 because same side interior angles. Now, of course you could have said, well, that's gonna be you know 110 right there because of corresponding. So this, or this is all in 10 because of alternate interior. Either way, it's good to start with the one that's a number. All right, so now we know that these are congruent because they're vertical angles. So it's sort of like Z plus 32 equals 70. And so just uh, Z equals just um, 38. Uh, it says 38. Okay, so Z is 38. This whole angle is 70. Um, but now I know that this is 70. I do know that this is 70 as well, right? So I can say, okay, well, 5Y plus 10 equals 70 because they're the same. All right, so 5y equals 60, so y equals 12. Okay, and actually, if I know, look, these are actually corresponding right here, and these are same side as well, interior, so that I know that they're going to be 70. So, so x was 70, uh, z was 38, and y was 12. All right, so the, finally, the last, oh, no, not the last one, the last one on this page. All right, so we can start with X because we know that these are uh, parallel. So we know that this and this are going to be 90. They're both same side interior angle. They got to add to 180, supplementary that is. So we know that 3X equals 90 or 3X plus 90 equals 180, but it comes down to this anyway. So X is 30, okay? Um, we also know that if this is 90, this whole angle is 90, right? So like these two angles are complementary. But what we also know is if you know these are parallel, that this... You know, this angle right here and this angle right here are going to be corresponding, right? It's going to look like this, you know, this and this. Those are corresponding angles, so they're going to be congruent. So 68 is this angle here. So 68 is going to equal 8y plus 4. So we get 64 equals 8y. So we get y equals 8. Okay? And so if this is 68, we actually know that this angle in here because these are two are complementary that we said, these, this has to be 22 degrees. And that's also 2z. So we could basically say that 2z equals 22. So z has to be 11. All right, so now to this one. There's going to be a lot of the similar ones in here. But basically, we know that all these lines are parallel. And in fact, if I, if I had them, I would sort of say, okay, well, that is parallel to that, which is parallel to this. Now I'm just kind of on its own floating. All right, so if we know that this is 70, we can know that vertical angle, so C is 70 here, uh, and then we know that B has to be 110, and we know that A has to be 110 as well. We know that this is 55, this is marked the same, so it also has to be 55, and so this has to be 125 because they're a linear pair, N has to be 125 because they're vertical angles, E has to be 55 because their vertical angles are a linear pair, however you wanna do it, and we can do the same sort of combinations over here um, I put one in even if I didn't need it, but that's fine. So now we move down. Now we realize, hey, these are parallel, right? So this cluster of angles has to match this cluster of angles because they're parallel. Corresponding angles are equal. So if this is 125, this is 125. Why is 125? If this is 55, then corresponding would be that this is 55. Um, and then this is vertical angle or it's alternate interior angles. A lot of ways to go. We can kind of do the same thing over here. If this is 55, so is M. Right, and then this is 125, and this is 125, and this is 55. And again, these these match because that these these are these angles, sorry, these lines P and Q are parallel. And these lines P and Q are parallel, and they happen to start off with the same angle here, so they're gonna be the same. That's the only reason why they're the same is because they have the same angle. They don't have to be, but uh, like in, in other situations, but in this situation they are because they're congruent. Okay, and then we have, we can do the same thing here. We know that this is corresponding, so 125. We could say, oh, look, X and Q are alternate interior, so that's 55. Oh, uh, P and V are alternate exterior, so that's 55, and that's 125 for a host of reasons. And we can do the same thing over here, 55, 125, uh, 55, and 125. Again, sort of the same reasons that I said over here. Now this one sort of, none of the, this isn't parallel, so I'm not gonna do 125 and this is just easy because hey, it's 80. So we can say vertical angles have to be 80, linear pairs may have to make it add up to 180, so it's gotta be 100. So there we go there. See ya.